All right, welcome to step 11. Uh, just so you know, I did finish up the uh, CAD work on the two fuel tanks from step 10. And if you head over to my Patreon and you become a $25 a month member, you can download the CAD files and print off the uh, fuel tanks. And if you just want to purchase some so that you have something that's more accurate, head on over to sammodels.com and you should be able to find those for sale shortly. All right, moving on. So, first part is J29 to make a radiator part. They are um, basically copies. So pegs on one side, holes on the other. They press fit together pretty slick. It's actually kind of an ingenious way to make a nice radiator without horrible seam lines through the actual uh, radiator joints or fins, I guess. So glue this up in here and press it together. Once I have this done, look it over. This side needs just a little bit on the sides to make sure it stays good and done. Now there is no up or down or back or front or anything at this point in time. This is G15. It just slides right into G15. Near as I can tell, anyhow. Let's take a look. Maybe there is a top and a bottom. Eh, it doesn't seem like it. G15 is just snug. So, I put the part in first. Now I'll put some glue in. All right, now that that's done, coming over here, we have G13 and F35. Orient this G13 correctly. According to the instructions, basically the notch up and towards the back. And there's the peg inside that's gonna go and slide in there. And dry fit it in there, it's a little tight. So I will clean this out a little bit just to get this accessible. Now for this, I'm gonna add the glue first. Start softening things up. Push it together. Yeah, that little bit of help that I just gave it really did do the trick as far as letting it slide on. Okay, so add a little glue on this side. Add a little glue on this side. Make sure that you've got it oriented correctly. All right, coming up next, we've got F37 on the one side, and you want to make sure that the notch is towards the top when this is placed on. Now, this is kind of unusual in that it looks like what it's telling you to do is put it underneath but in actuality it's telling you to tuck it in like so now 
far as I can tell, F39 doesn't have an up or a down. It's all, it's uniform both ways. Here, the same. So there's that. And then we take part, or the part from uh, the previous step, the notches go on either side. As you can see, it's a little complicated. Now I've got it all together, no glue yet. Got it all together, but you know, it's a little complicated. But once it's together, it does fit together really nice and snug. I'm gonna go through and hit the joints with glue now that I've got it all put together. Same thing with the joint on the top. And that should make sure that everything is nice and glued. So you can see that we added to the frame. I'm gonna skip that at this point, move on to the next set. I'm gonna go down into the corner here and I've got these parts. Now, E41 goes like this, G28 is bent to the back and there are little notches underneath the bottom of each leg that go in here and on the other uh, half the other piece, uh, D47. And they fit nice and snug, so this is gonna take a little bit of effort, and you don't wanna bend them too far, either forward or back. And it looks like the pegs are just a titch bit too large. Like there's a little lip maybe, or something, so I am just gonna take my file, and put it on the front and just run them back and forth just, just to take a little smidge off. Same thing with this side, just, just run it back and forth. Again, here's the part. This way, now it fits a lot better. So, and then this piece right here, E10, again, tabs on the back, go right in there. So I'm gonna, glue them on to one side here, in this case part E41, just to get things started and sticky so it's not too much of a problem when I'm doing this. Same thing with this, making sure to keep it in the upright position and not let it I don't want it to tilt over, I want it to be square. And then taking this piece here, again D47, put a little glue here, glue this up right here. And then before the glue gets a chance to dry, put it all together. I'm gonna put it down on here just to help keep it in general level and square. And then add a little bit more glue on here just to make sure that that gets done right. And I'm fussing with it a little bit just to make sure everything is square. Now, there are photo etch parts to add. 
which I have not cut out yet. And they come on different uh, plates. So all the photo etch for one piece is not on one uh, deck, plate, piece, however you want to think of it. One photo etch sheet. There we go. I know if I thought about it, I'd remember. Now, each one of these photo etch sheets in a corner has M, B, M, C, S, D, M, D, M, D again, stuff like that. So that's what you've got to pay attention to while you're working on this, just to make sure that things get done in proper order. But at the same time, I have not been able to find MA yet. And that is a bit of a challenge because MA has a few of the parts that we need. <laughs> so let's go on an adventure to see where Hobby Boss put the parts. Because right now, I don't know. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what if it's clear? Well, the clear parts are actually GP. So at least for this first section, that's, that's not correct. However, There are more parts, so I'm looking. Ah, here we are. So, in the part that has the colored cabling, we also have MA. And MA gives us the two end pieces right there for whatever that is. I'm not sure if that's the skid for the fifth wheel or just some general framework, but we need the two little pieces of photo etch, and they're very small from out of MA. So I just cut them off. And then open this up. Using my forceps and I'm sorry I'm not showing this but it's a little bit hard so what I've done is I've cut through the plastic that's got this rather than peeling this off and having the photo which fully exposed I just cut the parts out on here and cut this this piece of plastic and then pull the parts out with my tweezers I find that that helps to keep things from getting bent or flying off or uh, any other annoying things like that so now i've got these two small photo etch pieces they do have some burrs sticking up even though i cut them as close as i could and they are definitely difficult to uh, sand i will not disagree with that they're f reasonably thick so they do take side to side um, what would I call it? Uh, side to side energy, <laughs> yawing, whatever. Uh, they they do take it. So now that that's done, this has to be upside down, as it is. Now, I'm not too worried about it just yet, but. If you look at the instructions, it's the and if you look at the pieces, they do have a bit of a cant. It's they're not just rectangular. Um, so the wider part, this bottom part versus the top part, uh, goes towards the bottom. And I'm going to use my 
previous um, trick, if you will, and just use tester's glue. Now I did not clean up this piece. But I cleaned up the other one and this will allow you to see what this looks like, cleaned up and not cleaned up. And then you can decide, well, do I wanna clean it up or do I not wanna clean it up? Is it worth the hassle of doing the work? So, that said, I happen to think that, at least at this point, it's probably not worth the trouble, but there you go. That's what it looks like. Now, I need to also get two of MC-8. I do have MC right on hand, and this time I will try and show you what I'm doing. So, MC-8 are these two strips right here. Go one on each side. So as I said before, or what I did is I cut through the photo etch while it's still on the sticky part. Then I cut through the plastic the long way, cut it like that to give me a flap, and there come the parts up. And they kind of popped out even though they're this is kind of a stickier setup. The other thing about these parts, it looks like, is that they need to be bent. Yep. And because they're so small, this could be tricky. Essentially, what we're doing is bending them into kind of a, a U shape and putting them where the indicators are on each side. Now to do this, I could pick out, get out my handy dandy little photo etched bender but what I like to do with small parts like this is put them on my forceps and just bend them real quick with my forceps I find that that works just as well and I can adjust them as needed now it isn't going to keep them as perfectly square as if I was doing it with my photo etch bender, but I'm not as worried about it. And sometimes I'll bend that up 90 degrees first and then bend it back, but in the end, I get what I want, which is that little piece like that. Now I'm gonna check my parts. This, this is bent in a little bit, bend that back, take my glue, Put it on that side, take my part, and attach it. Now I've got to remember that I've done this, so I'm not just manhandling this kit. But, part one is on. And working with photo etch, you just, you just need to practice with it. It's not always easy all the photo etch sets out there not all of them are equal sometimes the photo etch like if you got an old Verlinden kit photo etch in there can be seriously thick like almost impossible thick you all, you have to heat it up with an open flame to burnish it just to be able to work with it it can be very uh, trying, and trying is a polite term. And depending on what other company you get, sometimes you can get stuff that's like really, really thin too, like too thin. And so you'll go to work with a part and it feels like it almost crumbles into, into dust as you're moving it around. I've had some uh, photo etch for aircraft from a company in South America that was like gold foil in, in that when you went to put the part on, there was, there was almost like no metal there. 
it was it was yeah gold foil gold leaf it was something else never had seen that before so this photo etch from hobby boss is pretty run-of-the-mill uh, nothing special nothing crazy you can work with it all right the next thing that we're going to do are these supports on the sides and the important thing is is you have to keep these parts equal all the way down the side because g23 and j36 have they're they're cl clearly close but they're not identical and if you mix them up you're going to be uh having problems later on and you don't want that so here's where g23 goes in here's where j36 go in and then finally we have c8 that goes up front now you'll notice here with this support that it seems like it's off compared to the other two and if you see that you can take like a forceps sometimes and twist it but if you can't you'll notice like there was a crack that started to develop don't worry about it just let it be when we put the fuel tank on we can adjust as needed with that and it won't really show and that way we have the solid support so you don't want to break your parts but just in case you see that kind of thing you can gently try and twist it sometimes sometimes you just got to go with what's there so knowing that we have these supports to put in put the glue for them first one is on and I just want it to get and stick and stay for right now and I'll go back later and make sure that they're square plumb in level but for this point I just want to make sure I get enough glue in there so that they start to form a solid joint and finally the one up front for C8 Sometimes they're a little bit harder to put in. Again, just check and let the glue do its job. Slowly let it do what it needs to do. through and sorry I've really got to get a little more situationally aware just going through and checking to make sure that everything is level so I'm looking down the side this one right here needs to go up but the other ones are in good shape coming from the top looks good so I'm not going to fool around with them too much. I just want them to sit there. I can adjust them after they're glued. Not too worried about it. Now I'm going to take this part that we worked on and carefully add it back here. Now, the way you know that you've got it on right is there are notches in the sides that go over these uh, supports. And you want to do this while it's still a little uh, not glue stuck because you might need to do a little bit of adjusting to get them to, to fit. Now, they don't snap over the top completely. There is a bit of a gap, but... This is how they're supposed to play out. And it doesn't seem like everything fits exactly right. 
not sure precisely what's going on, but it seems like for this to fit over, over this, it's pushing this piece here and it's pushing this to get it to fit. It's, it's splaying out the bottom and I don't want that. I want this to fit side to side. So in that case, and not knowing how it's doing on that side. Okay, so in the back, looking at it, it seems fine. But for the front, it's it's off. So when dealing with that, what I'm gonna do is take this apart and I'm gonna cut this notch a little bit wider. Uh, that means it's not going to be quite so secure when I have it glued. And I'm going to cut this notch a little bit wider as well. But this will give me some play. So I can put the parts in. And that's where the dry brushing and the extra fitting come in. Now, if I had known that this was gonna be a problem beforehand, I would have dealt with it. Okay, so this goes like this, These part, this part goes up here like that, yep. I would have cut those notches or widened it out a little bit before I would have glued it on. Didn't find out till now. That's why I'm doing these videos to help you guys out. So. Hopefully you don't have this problem like I just did. And that's okay. That's that's what the hobby's about is having having some fun and figuring things out with people. Now, that feels like it fits a lot better. Looking at it, yep, it looks much better. But it's a little uh, gooey right now. So what I want to do is place that down there. And what I want to do is make sure I'm, I'm separating the two parts and making sure that they're as far apart as possible so that I can glue that on. Just want to let that set a little bit. While we're waiting, I need to find MB11. which is on this sheet right here, MB11. I'm gonna cut my part out, like I showed you before. Just going cutting the, the notches off as I'm letting it stay under the plastic and then folding that plastic up and getting the part out of it so then I can still keep all the other parts handy on the fret without losing them. I, I just like the way that that works. And I personally haven't had too many problems with it. Otherwise, it can be a little frustrating. It takes a little getting used to. In the end, I like it. At least I like it less, or I like it more than other options. So this is the part, and what they were, what they say here is, you have to fold over this side here, and you also need to fold the bottom up at 120 degrees. So how do you figure out what 120 degrees is? Well, that's hard. So what I'm going to do is put this in and bend it, what I think is 120 degrees, and then compare it to the uh, drawing on the instructions and hopefully between the two I can get pretty close so there's 90 right there take that off if 
using my forceps. I'm gonna tuck that in tighter. And yeah, this can be a problem too because if you don't have something that's long enough, then you start bending the the photo etch around stuff. And then you, you can go back and try and flatten it out. Again, situational awareness. I'm not used to modeling that far away from my body. So, look at what it is. Wrong direction, Jacques. Wrong direction. So I overdid it. So thankfully, I can straighten this out. What I want to do then, to make sure that this gets really good and straight, is I'm putting this in with the large piece of metal inside the clamp, like so. And then I am using my forceps to bend outward not inwards. But that also has the effect of straightening out that piece of photo etch. Much nicer. So how does that look? Almost perfect right there. So looks good to me in that direction. If I'm really worried about it I can also place this in Like so. So that I can basically squish it. And the bends that were in it are much, much straighter now. So all I need to do is place this in here. Like so. Now, I do like using razor blades or other things like that if I have them available. Something nice and flat to lift up larger pieces like that. It just helps overall. So there aren't as many problems, but you know, there's there's your piece. This is what this is what we were worried about. This is what we got. Now, the odd part about this, and I'm not exactly sure. I think I'm going to fold it the other direction. Although it, this is what it shows it to. Oh no! Even though it shows it like this in the instructions, right there on the bottom. In here, it looks like they have it folded in the other direction for the back. And it does seem odd that you would put the three dot detail, the bolt heads, up against the bodywork. So, in this case, I'm going to flatten this out. I'm going to put this into the there straighten it out a little bit it's not perfect but it's better and then I'm going to start it and put it down like that and then using a straight edge bring it back up So I think that is how it should be instead with those three bolt heads sticking out. Get that to be about a 90 degree. Gonna take this, I'm gonna look and find the pause, the uh, spot to put it on. And this time, instead of using glue for this, I like to use um, rubberized glue or I'm not sure what else to call it and it's it's basically just IC2000 tire glue but this is my favorite go-to glue I find that the parts stick 
much better. And if I have any glue on the sides, I can clean it up using Uncure. Put a little bit on a Q-tip and clean it up around there. And yep, I, I happen to like how that works. So there's me not using regular testers model glue to uh, paint that. Now I'm cleaning off the tip of my super glue bottle because for some reason it's also covered in glue. Like it's been knocked over or something. However, I don't believe I did. So a bit of a mystery there for me. Anyway, neither here nor there. We are also waiting a little bit for um, those parts to finish drying up or at least setting a little bit more so then when we go to put it on there we have the flexibility and the stickiness at the same time. We don't want parts coming off but we don't want them so cured that all we're doing is bending the plastic. So turn that around that way. Again, being careful. Yep, this is much more solid. Putting this on feels much better. Does not feel like I'm stretching things to get this to work. All right, so then to secure that, it looks like it's just glue down each frame. Like so. Sorry about the shaking. Just like so. And then I'm going to go and put some glue right on these edges. Let that soak up in there. Get that, get a nice positive. Should work. Okay, and finally, what we need to do is get MC3 and bend that. So, a fair amount of photo etch this time. So, here's MC, MC3 right here. Gonna pull that off. Do the cutting, pull the plastic adhesive off. There is one big bend line in the back. As this shows right here, it's basically just, uh, it's not quite a 90 degree. And in this case, you'll notice it's almost bigger. It's not. But it's almost bigger if it is bigger then you have to start looking at either getting a different photo etch bender or uh, coming up with a interesting way to do that now those right here are on the top with the bend so you can kind of set it like that and go hmm I got them on the top okay it bends this way now, again, I would rather have like a, um, a uh, razor blade or something like that, but I'm also using the flat side of this just to give it that shape. Is that, how is that? That feels pretty good. So the bolts are on top. That looks pretty good in my mind. So we take the radiator assembly, the peg, or not the peg, the radiator cap portion is on the bottom. 
there are the there's the lines for the or the peg right there for adding the next parts and then we have this here and what we're seeing is that this goes on in one of two spots it either goes on like so it doesn't seem like that or it just gets glued on the front brace right there and the top so this is this is flush with this this can be glued on this right here can be glued on as well i'm gonna go back to my super glue for this right here just to, to put a little bit on there because i don't want this flopping around and i'm gonna very carefully just put a little run of it But this is just for my own peace of mind. This isn't necessarily what's needed because this is probably what's going to hold it on the most. But I'm going to plop that on. Plop that on the front. Like so. So I've got my super glue holding this on right here. Nice. And then I've got my regular model glue up on here. And I just put a little bit of a fingerprint in the middle and I don't want that so I'll do that now I do have an issue and I haven't determined if it's going to be a big issue or not but when I was taking these horns off for this parts J24 one of them was broken half and I lost the whole base so what do you what do you do well in this case what I'm gonna do first is glue on the intact horn. And I don't know how much of this is visible once the kit is made, so that's part of my problem. So I'm putting that on right there. Right, like so. So now I've got this other horn, well, what do you do? I mean, there's nothing there. What I'm going to do is get a piece of strip styrene, or you can use, um, you know, a bit of, of plastic from the kit to mount this on, but just something so that it's mounted on the base. So here, actually, I've got a bit of rod. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop off what I think is an appropriate amount. About that much in this case. I'm going to put some glue on here. I'm going to glue on this, or I'm gonna drop it on the floor. And I'm glad you're here to see these kinds of things happen because it happens to all of us. It seems uh, maybe a little uh, theatrical or maybe I'm trying to pad the, the video, but in all reality, everybody has a bad time. Some days, nothing seems to uh, stay where you want it to stay. Things just kind of fly off wherever they are, no matter how good or bad you are. And it's, it's nice to, to know that everybody no matter how good or bad they are at building models or whatever everybody is the same in that regard so i put a little bit of glue on there put a little glue on there and what i'm going to do is kind of cheat and just glue what is left of the horn further back it gives me the impression of both horns there but it's it's not perfect if i was really worried about it, if i was going to be showing this off i would prob in all honesty i would probably go into my 3d cad program and draw up a new one or see if i could get one from somebody else that maybe wasn't going to do this the only thing you got to do when you're when you're doing this kind of stuff is make sure that everything is square and level because it's a, a unusual i'm going to call it unusual part 
So now this has it still upside down. There's the notch. And then we take the, this piece here and this gets glued in right like so. So I'm gonna do that real quick. And then I'm gonna look at how this is set up. Hopefully, the way this is going, everything is square. Uh, the one thing that could be a problem is, is I'm trying to keep all of this square and these horns kind of feel like they wanna poke out, but in reality, they may need to be flat so that all the parts fit later on. And if I'm not careful, then all of a sudden, things are pointing in the wrong direction. Things get a little tougher later on. We don't want that. We want this to be smooth. But anyways, there's that on. And the hole is your guide for putting the radiator in. What I wanna do is make sure for that is it just that. It feels like it also, well, yep, yep. Oh my goodness. So, when I put this frame on before, I put it on upside down. That will not do. So, there you go. I was not paying attention. I screwed up. This goes on top like this and this. So, I have to re glue this. Now, it. As you can see, it's just a little bit of a, a glue fix, no big deal, so to speak, but instructions can get really, really screwy really, really fast. And now I've got a little bit of glue that's moving around too, so I don't want to get fingerprints where I don't want fingerprints. So this very simple uh, build step, it's now a little bit more complicated. Now imagine you're doing this at night after say a hard day at work or something along those lines and I can see how things would get really, really crabby really, really fast. So I'm gonna put the glue on here across the whole piece. And then because I know that this goes in this notch right up here, I'm gonna put the glue right in there as well. And I'm gonna, cause see there it, it's twisting and falling. So I'm gonna take this and go back, put this in. But now it's got something to rest on so it won't twist. And I am putzing around with this a little bit because I want this to go where the marks were from before when I had this in right, but upside down. So there's a good example of having to fix something on the fly. Pay attention to the instructions. So there. Now, you'll notice that this doesn't go all the way forward. I'm not trying to have it go all the way forward because that keeps it square. However, I'm gonna take and look at the instructions ahead. Yep, the instructions, at least at this point, show that that should be straight up and down in step 12 with the bar kind of in the middle. So I feel confident that we don't have a mistake or that we're missing a part. We have the photo etch pieces in place that we wanted. We've got things glued on as we expected. good 
So I'm going to say, there you go. That's the end of step 11.